All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We have to be brief. But what we do want to say is this. Self-love is not a laughing matter. Good. Okay. <laughs> we had to do a little cue, but you did laugh. Okay. But self-love is not a laughing matter. Maybe we should say self-love is not a joking matter. Because the truth of this is this. If you don't love yourself, no one else can. And if you don't love yourself, no one else knows how to love you, more importantly. You show people how to love you by the way you love yourself. You show people how to love you by the way you love yourselves. And by the way you love yourselves, you will be known. By the way you love yourself, you will be known. You're used to it being by my actions, or by me keeping my word, or paying my bills on time. By the way you love yourself, you will be known. Do we need to say it again? No. When you walk into this world and people look at you, they see how you love yourself. And they see your unique expression of the way you love yourself. And some people, the way they love themselves is to get their nails done and their hair done and their clothes. And some people, the way they love themselves is cooking beautiful meals and gardening and bringing in all this produce and making these beautiful things. And some people have other ways of showing how they love themselves. They go exercise all the time and lift up weights and all these sort of things. The thing you love about yourself, people will see in you. The thing you love about yourself, people will see in you. And it fits with what Elohim's been teaching you. Your internal world is expressed in your external environment. So if you're loving yourself, people see that love and respond to it in certain ways. You can't necessarily dictate their behavior. Certainly they're script holders, blah, 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 blah. But let's just talk about it in a more general term. You can't dictate how people react to you necessarily. But you can certainly influence the outcome by loving yourself well and sending that into the world instead of doubt and anguish and anxiety and feeling stepped on and being a victim and all that. That's going to have a different outcome. If you walk into a room knowing you love yourself and emanating your truth, you're going to have a different experience than if you walk into a room feeling like a victim and feeling like a doormat. We expect all of you can agree with that. By the way you love yourself, you will be known, and you will be reacted to by the way you love yourself. By the way you appreciate yourself, you will be known. By your love, you will be seen. By your love, you will be reacted to. So it might be just a really spiffy idea to love yourself well. And if there are parts of you that you don't love, you might want to just attend to those parts. And if you are a pro have a problem with aspects of yourself, you might just want to say, well, this is very important for me to look at, to attend to, to change, to transform. And if nothing else, I can say, God, I really hate this about myself, but I'm not going to hide from it. I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to say, there's something about me I hate. And instead of pretending I don't hate it, or hiding from the fact I hate it, I'm going to put it front and center and say, I hate this about me. Because that's a loving act. Why? Because you're not stuffing or hiding it in your body or your field. You're allowing yourself to look at it. Even if you say every day I hate that, it's preferable than to pretend that you don't. Because one is truth and one's not. And you know about truth. Its vibratory rate is higher. And higher vibration facilitates transformation, even if it's about hate. Truth about hate is more transformational than a lie. Every time. It takes, it's very brave to do that, but we encourage you to look at it. Loving yourself well allows other people to know how to love you. Loving yourself well allows other people to know you and it lets other people know how you want to be treated.
It's the first boundary. It's the boundary between I get, I'm mean to myself and I love myself. Bottom line, you can even love the things you're tempted to be mean about. I love myself even though I hate parts of me. You can love your hatred of aspects of yourself. You can love it for being there, for being present, for showing you something, for informing you, for giving you the gift of its presence. It's a choice. You have a choice to sit in I suck or a choice to sit in I'm going to love that I suck. And somebody laughed. Thank goodness, because that actually was supposed to generate a little bit of a giggle in you. But it's still true. It is still true. It is still true. Are you listening? <laughs> that wasn't rhetorical. <laughs> We're going to go now because Elohim took up all the time and we know you want to hear the warrior's story, so off we go. Bye. But we really... <laughs> Here's your hat, what's your hurry? <laughs> don't let the door hit us in the ass on the way out. We don't have an ass. But you have a hat, though. We'd like to. <laughs> We're still looking for those stiletto heels, too. Not very <laughs> they might just be good if you don't ever walk. <laughs> right? We don't ever walk, so we're not so worried about the, the comfort level. All right, all right, all right. We're, we could be silly all night. Did you get the message? Yes. yes. By the way you love yourself, ye shall be known. We'll do it in biblical talk. Got it. It's true. We'll leave you with that. Okay. <laughs>